Okay, so now we've got to talk about uh, one of the most famous poems of the 20th century uh, by James Wright, a poem called Lying in a Hammock at William Duffy's Farm in Pine Island, Minnesota, which is quite a mouthful for a title, but hey, you know, we make do. Uh, so this poem uh, on first reading is incredibly simple. You just get uh, 12 lines of description, relatively dull upon first read. You know, you see a butterfly, then there's a leaf, and there's some cowbells, and, you know, stuff is happening. And it's not, you know, particularly profound or out of the ordinary. And then, boom, we get that last line, the 13th line of the poem, I have wasted my life, where it just completely comes out of nowhere. Uh, one thing I think that helps make this a little more real and why it's significant is the simple fact that when Wright wrote this poem in 1963, no one had really done stuff like this. The whole confessionalist era in poetry was just starting to get off the ground. So there wasn't much stuff where people were actually like talking about their own lives or sort of revealing their inner state of things. You know, Sylvia Plath uh, was just sort of just happening. You know, it wasn't something that was uh, well established. So it was particularly surprising. Uh, before this era, it wouldn't have been out of the ordinary for this poem to just have the 12 lines and then just end, and it would have just been an imagist poem. But that's not what we get here. We get something a little bit more complex with that last line added in. And it's not a, a matter of self-pity so much, but it does make you think, what in those first 12 lines makes the 13th line something that you can anticipate. Uh, probably there's not a whole lot, but that hasn't stopped people um, for 50 years now uh, trying to figure it out. So you get the, the bronze butterfly. One thing that is true is there's a lot of color going on. Bronze, black, green in the first three lines. Uh, there's a lot of additional complexity. The, sort of the idea that when, when it says the droppings of last year's horses blaze up into golden stones, uh, in some ways, this is actually emblematic of the idea that if you're viewing nature for its true beauty, then under those types of circumstances, you're going to think that even horse crap is a beautiful thing. And that does seem to be uh, the viewpoint and stature of our narrator in this poem. Similarly, we get... Uh, I lean back as the evening darkens and comes on. A chicken hawk floats over looking for home. In some ways, a chicken hawk is something devastating, you know, because it goes around killing chickens. Uh, but also at the same time, there's something sort of grandiose about it. So there are a couple big interpretive possibilities here. On one hand, there's the possibility that this person... Uh, is a person who feels like spending time out in nature is kind of a waste of time. So he's laying there in a hammock and he's just like, ah, oh, man, I've wasted my life. I haven't really done anything. I've just been lazing around here watching the world go by. Uh, that's an interpretation oftentimes favored by young people and also people uh, who grew up in the city uh, because they sometimes view this sort of pastoral life as being kind of idle. Um, but on the other hand, there's the interpretation often favored by older people and people who have spent more time in the country where it's the impression is that our narrator is visiting William Duffy's farm uh, from afar and he's potentially a city type of person and this actually is presenting a rare opportunity for him to slow down, take his time and see what the world has to offer. So those are the two uh, key things. Um, one thing from an authorial intent perspective that I think is interesting is the idea that James Wright actually says that the last line of this poem, he refers to it as a religious statement, um, sort of a, a declaration uh, in a commentary on culture. He actually said that he uh, thought that most people don't see how precious their lives are. Uh, so when reading this poem, it, it does sort of make you think a little bit more deeply just about uh, what wasting a life is and what not wasting a life would be. So like I mentioned, this poem, 
definitely one of the most famous poems of the 20th century. Pretty much any literature anthology of 20th century American writers, you're going to find this poem in there somewhere. So that brings us to the second poem uh, involved in this discussion, which is Traveling Through the Dark by William Stafford. This is kind of a disturbing little poem, uh, relatively brief, you know, doesn't have any, uh, you know, uh, particularly complicated things to understand, but the situation that it presents is kind of an unsavory one. Man's driving along the road at night, sees a dead deer in the road. He's like, oh, I know this road. It's very narrow. Uh, if somebody swerves to avoid hitting this dead deer, they might crash and get in an accident. So he gets out to actually push the deer uh, down over the hill to try to save people. But then when he's doing this, he puts his hand on its belly, realizes that there's actually a live fawn inside of this dead deer. That's a pretty complicated situation. So one thing I always like to ask in this situation is, what would you do? What would you do if you came across this circumstance where you had to decide whether to push the deer over the edge or do you try to save the baby deer? Um, do you try to get it out of the mother yourself? Do you call for help? You know, what is it exactly that you do? And this is an example of an ethical decision. Uh, this poem does have a lot to do with ethics, and it's that whole entire idea that ethics as right action, the type of thing, like what are you going to do? What's the right thing to do? And in this poem, uh, Stafford really gets to the root of what's the right thing to do. Like it says, Besides that mountain road, I hesitated. The car aimed ahead its lowered parking lights. Under the hood purred the steady engine. I stood in the glare of the warm exhaust turning red. Around our group I could hear the wilderness listen. I thought hard for us all, my only swerving, and pushed her over the edge into the river. Man, that's a tough decision that he made. And he says, I thought hard for us all. You get the feeling he's not just thinking for himself. He's not just thinking for the dead deer or for the, the unborn child deer within it. He's thinking for all of humanity, all of existence, you know, the whole entire big picture. What's the right decision? And there's no clear cut answer. And that's a complicated thing for him to have to determine. And I think that this poem, perhaps better than any other, really, really gets to that ethical question. How do we decide what is the right thing to do in our lives when we come to complicated decisions and even when the decision at face value doesn't seem that complicated? There's always additional layers underneath and traveling through the dark gets to a few of those layers.